Hello and welcome back to episode 3 of The Modern Working Musician, where each week we feature an artist or musician who has redefined what it means to make a career out of music. I am your host, Keegan Peluso. I am a musician, educator, songwriter, and doer of musical things. Also, I am a beanie wearer and beard grower, as of today, because I really need a haircut. This week, we will feature a very good friend of mine, Mr. Will Cassegro. Will and I met in college, and since then, we have both moved on to very different things. Will is a drummer in an indie rock band known as Cooper the Band. Will is going to talk a little bit about what his life is like in that band, uh, some tools that they use being DIY musicians, and the biggest thing is how to fund a successful Kickstarter. Cooper the Band just recently funded their full-length record known as Kingdoms via Kickstarter, and it was very successful. They raised over ten grand, and Will's going to give us some tips on how to do that. Um, the record is out now, available anywhere, and it is fantastic. After that, Will's going to move on. He's going to talk to us about how he has used social media and music not only as a networking tool, but as a motivational tool to help him better himself, his health, and other things. For our Patreon subscribers, Will and Cooper sat down and gave us a top 25 checklist for DIY musicians that will be available as a PDF on our Patreon. Once again, $5 a month gets you all access to everything that is on there. As of now, we have the DIY checklist. We have an exclusive songwriting live stream featuring my brother, Keith Peluso, who is in the top 24 on season 15 of The Voice. And we also have a short tutorial on Instagram engagement via Mike Wade. Every week we will have more and more resources, so you don't want to miss out. You definitely want to get on the ground floor of this. That is patreon.com slash Keegan Peluso, K-E-E-G-A-N-P-A-L-U-S-O. And without further ado, here is my very pleasant conversation with my longtime friend, Will Casagro. officially recorded sweet all right everybody welcome to episode three of the modern working musician uh where each week we find a musician or artist who pays the bills using music and we find out exactly what makes them tick uh today with me is my good friend and old college roommate mr will Casagro. what's up um will how's it going man man i have no complaints they're going really well very cool will is a uh, drummer in a DIY indie rock band called Cooper the Band. Woo woo. Uh, he's going to talk to us a little bit today about what that's like, what it's like being in a DIY band, um, and all of his other shenanigans. But we're going to start going way, ba- way, way back. Will, how did you get into music, man? Um, you know, I got into music because I did not like my art teacher. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, so. The way my middle school was set up, we had like exploratory, that was like the PE or technology or art or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, So my sixth grade year, I did all that stuff and I didn't didn't like it, especially the art teacher, just wasn't a fan of her. Uh, And then seventh grade rolls around and I was like, you know, if I can do band, I ain't got to do art. Mm -hmm. So I went to the band director and I was like, hey, I think I I don't know what I want to do, but I think I want to do band. Um, he was like, cool, come to the, uh, auditions in like a week or whatever, and, uh, we'll figure out what you can do. So I went and could not buzz my lips to save my life. Um, he handed me like a saxophone mouthpiece and I, I squeaked the whole time as a seventh grader probably does. But, mm-hmm. um, he said, all right, cool. Well, keep, uh, at that time I didn't know what quarter notes were. Uh, he's like, keep quarter notes with your foot and play like a simple rhythm with your hands or repeat after me type thing. So, mm-hmm. He played something, and then I did that back, and it was exactly what he asked for. And he was like, yep, you should think about percussion. And I was like, uh, what is percussion? (laughs) (laughs) Um, He was like, yeah, drums. I was like, oh, those look fun. So I went to my mom, and I was like, hey, mom, uh, I went to the band director today, and he said I should play drums. She was like, nope, you're not (laughs) doing that. That's No, that's not happening. 
So the next day I went to the band director and I was like, yeah, mom's on board. Let's do it. Uh-oh. Like the little parent trap switcheroo type nice. mentality, which was funny. So he sent home a permission slip that was like, uh, hey, you know, make sure that she for sure is on board by getting her to sign this. And I pulled like the whole Dwight from the office where he was trying to get Phyllis to sign something, but covered it up with another page. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Um, so I put something on top. I was like, hey, just sign these permission slips. It'll, you know, get me to do whatever or have this certain lunch for the day or whatever it was. And took it back to the band director. And he was like, all right, cool. So wow. it was a <laughs> you conned your mom uh, into yeah. band. Love you, mom. That's cool though, man. Yeah. Like moral of the story, of... kids: be dishonest. It'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> it'll get you where you want to go. If all else fails, <laughs> lie, lie. It's the human. Don't way. do that. Don't do that. It's a yeah. bad idea. No, that's man. That's that's cool though. That shows how really how badly you want. Like you must have wanted to play music really <laughs> yeah, bad if you're willing to con so. your parents into getting into it. That's cool, man. Yeah, um, it was funny. Cool. So how you know. Uh, this podcast we talk about paying the bills using music and stuff like that, but it's it's definitely not just a music industry podcast. You know, we mm-hmm. love, as everybody who listens to this knows, I'm an educator. I do a, just a bunch of stuff. <laughs> um, so, how big of a role did band play in your life after getting into band? Man, I I dove into it pretty hard. Um, by the end of seventh grade, I was like first chair percussionist, just because I I really liked it and I I worked for it and. My other fellow percussionists just didn't care as much as I did. I had no, I had no idea why I liked it. At that it. point, did your mom know you were in band? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's, that's, yeah. Let me back up and talk about that. So when she finally found out that I, uh, you know, got the drum part or whatever, she was angry. Uh, oh, yeah. She's like, no, we have a clarinet you could play. Your cousin has a saxophone. Why are you playing percussion? And I was like, because the band director wanted me to. Yeah. Um, so it took some took some hardcore convincing, and then she finally ended up buying me a snare drum, a bell kit, and that's cool. Yeah. That's so, cool. Um, so yeah, she definitely knew I was in band. Um, but yeah, from there it just it turned into me practicing a lot, which was like thirty minutes a day at the time. I thought yeah. it was a lot. That is a lot for a seventh grader. Yeah. Um, yeah. So obviously the high school marching band. Um, I thought it was hot stuff for like my freshman year. I, I I got snare drum and I was I should not have been on snare drum my freshman year, but that that's how the, the dice fell that day I guess or that year. And um, I just kept diving into it more. I really enjoyed it. Cool. Um, started playing drum set. I was not good at all. And then my church needed a drummer for the youth band, and I was like I can do this. And I sounded like trash for a long time. Um, it's okay. Most of us do. When yeah. We're yeah. Nobody um, said. Let, let's go ahead and get that myth out of the way. Very few people pick up an instrument and actually sound good on it. That yeah, that's so, true. It takes uh, lots of work yeah, and dedication. Mo- if you yeah, most people who listen to this probably play music, and you know, like you know, well, I had my one cousin. He picked up that piano one time, and I swear <laughs> it sounded beautiful. It was amazing. Yeah, I, everybody's got that one cousin. <laughs> All right, so very cool, man. Uh, yeah. Going back to you know just middle school real quick. Uh, a lot of, in my experience teaching middle school and stuff, a lot of kids that dive into band, choir, the arts, stuff like that, uh, a lot of them become successful because, uh, especially in middle school, we're kind of looking for that sense of identity. Yeah, you know? for sure. Like, who am I? What am I doing? And the <laughs> band, the arts offer a really solid mm-hmm. expectation or a really solid uh, a niche for that, especially kids that, you know, my, my classic was kids that, didn't want to do PE, you know, like oh, yeah. I had so many kids in choir. They were like, why are you here? Cause I don't want to go PE. <laughs> like they make yeah. us wear shorts. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to run. Yeah. Do you feel like that was the case for you though? Yeah. Just like with the art class, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah. Like kind of going back to finding your identity in music. I was definitely the, the nerdy band kid. Um, but I mean, it, I didn't care. That's one thing that yeah. I feel like a lot of high school, middle school kids, you know, they they worry about what other people think about them, which everyone, you know, does. Yeah. But yeah, I didn't care. School, yeah, middle school's brutal, man. Yeah, yeah. That's um, good, man. Yeah, I'm I'm glad you found that identi- uh, uh, identity. And it's definitely, I mean, it's it's paid dividends for you. Yeah, so, for sure. You know, uh, parents, if you're listening to this, put your kids in band. Or, or let your kids do what they want. Yeah. But I, I do think music is... Uh, definitely one of those things to throw your kids into. All right, yeah, so for sure. fast forward, um, you know, we, you and I met in college. Um, so you were actually at my audition. 
I don't know if you remember that or not. You had long hair, a very short that. beard. Uh, um, I come in and you were practicing on some marimba, four mallet technique. Probably poorly. I'm still terrible at it. <laughs> oh, I am too. Um, um, but yeah, I think I remember you. So, uh, what was UT Martin like uh, going in? It's changed a lot since yeah. the days of us being there. It has. Uh, but how big of a role did being uh, a percussion major at UT Martin? How big of a role did that play on your musical career? Man, it was huge. Um, obviously, going into college in and of itself is scary, but going into like one of the big, the best percussion programs in the state was like, oh. Why am I here? This is kind of, this is kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Um, but Julie Hill was amazing, is amazing. Um, she saw something in me that I couldn't really see myself, um, which was just, you know, keep working for it. No matter how talented you think you are, you know, with the right teachers and the right attitude, you can definitely get to where you want to be. Um, so, yeah, it played a huge role. Martin is not a big town, as you know. Yeah. Um, so there was not much to do other than hang out with friends and practice. So I did a lot of both, probably a lot more hanging out with friends and practicing, but that's yeah. how college goes. <laughs> yeah, I feel like college is good. You know, like, yeah, I'm still trying to refine my practice method to this day, but mm-hmm. I feel like college is a good, uh, you know, trial by fire of getting your practice method down. I didn't really get a good practice method until I graduated. Yeah. I don't know if uh, uh, you feel the same way, but I also feel like it's easier to practice the stuff you want to practice. That's exactly yeah. what I was about to say. Like in college, you have, you know, as a music yeah. major, you have to do a uh, recital and all that. And yeah. it's fun. It's, it's stressful. It's fun, but it's not necessarily stuff, necessarily stuff that you want to play. Yeah. Like I'm, I mean, I, I'm not a marimba player, but it was always, Same. you know, like you, you can't play a drum set till you play marimba <laughs> yeah. first. And you know, like I, I have nothing against marimba. Yeah. I, you know, gr- you know, there are plenty of great marimba players out there. I am just not one of them. <laughs> You can't have dessert until you have your vegetables. <laughs> Pink Floyd. You can't eat your, can't have any pudding until you eat your meat. Oh. <laughs> or whatever that line is. Very cool, man. Um, so, and, you know, we kind of caught up. We talked a little bit about the college years. Um, yeah. So did it, uh, can you look back at any, uh, you know, we had, we talked about this a little bit before the interview. Going to college, you were planning on being a band director, correct? Yeah, that was the plan. Um all throughout high school, I had you know different band directors, different years, and I each obviously learned a lot from each one of them. Uh, I think it was my senior year when uh, Justin Brown got to Dyer County um, mm-hmm. that it really made me want to do what he was doing, which be a band director and be bearded. Um, Two very good things. <laughs> uh, so yeah, once you know, I went to college with the mindset of band director all the way, it'd be great. I'd be a teacher. Awesome. That sounds fun. And then went through the four years and my student teaching semester. Had a great experience. I had you know nothing negative about it, but I got done and I was like, you know, this is not, not really for me. Mm-hmm. And it took me graduating and not being a teacher for a little while to realize that large group settings of teaching is not exactly what I wanted to do. I got you. Yeah. So yeah, it, take, it takes a special breed to be a classroom educator. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't even know if I'm that breed. I just still do it. <laughs> I just stuck with it. Now, um, now I and you know not to heart too. I don't want to get on a rant on like the music education mm-hmm. degree or anything, but I do feel like that's uh, definitely a big thing that sticks out because I know a lot of potential music educators that they they don't realize that teaching's not for them until they student teach. Yeah. It's like, dude, yeah. I'm four years, sometimes five, sometimes five and a half mm. into a degree, and I, I just now realize that I don't want to do this. Yeah. You know, and it, it's kind of scary. Oh um, yeah, for sure. But I think it's really cool. Uh, I think you're a pretty good testament to the fact that, you know, the degree, like uh, a lot of people uh, going to college don't know um, what they want to do. And they feel like their major is like, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Yeah. Like if I'm, you know, and so they pick something that, you know, they're super passionate about um, or, or they think and they're like, okay, I can, I can do this for the rest of my life. Mm Mm-hmm. So, and that's why they end up in that de- degree program. But I think you're a very good testament to the fact that, like, just because you have a degree in music ed does not mean you have to go be a band director or a classroom educator. Yeah, and for sure. Like um, so, and that kind of jumps into our next thing. So, you get, you know, your student teaching, like, man, this is not what I want to do. Yeah, like I said, it was, a, it was a great experience. You know, it was during the marching band season, so I was busy always. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think that's kind of when I realized that, 
if I was going to be busy always, I kind of wanted it to be on my terms. Uh, and not necessarily like I have to be at a football game every Friday night. I have to be on a competition field every Saturday. Um, so yeah, once I graduated, I was like, you know, I, I'm going to change my career and, you know, be busy on my terms. Yeah. I really like that phrase, be busy on your own terms. (laughs) Thanks. Just coined it right now. Yeah. (laughs) Castle Grove original. Trademark. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. No. Yeah. I like that. You're like, you know, I want to be busy all the time, but not with just crazy obligations and, you know. Uh, I, I call it being on the clock, even though, you know, band directors are salary, you know, yeah. there, there are plenty of times you're like at a meeting or something that you really don't have to be at. Oh yeah, for or sure. It does not benefit you at all, but you've got to be there cause it's your job. Mm-hmm. Um, so what was the thought process, uh, going from, you know, your student teaching, you're about to graduate and you've just had this revelation that you don't want to be an educator anymore. So, yeah. what, so yeah. what, what kind of, <laughs> what, what went from like, you know. What was your thought process after that? What was the aftermath of that realization? Uh, the biggest part was like, oh, dang. i got to start paying back loans soon. i got to get a job. I got you. Um, so after I graduated, I graduated in December, and you know most schools aren't hiring halfway through. I mean, on mm-hmm. occasion they will. But yeah, I lucked out hardcore. Th- yeah. Um, so I, I wasn't really banking on any kind of teaching job. And that's kind of when I realized I didn't want to do that anyway. So I mm-hmm. wasn't even like really pursuing it that hard. Um, and I, I lived with my aunt and uncle for a little while. And um, they both work for the company I work for now. Um, and they were like, hey, you know, just throw in your application. It'll get you something, you know, making a little extra money to to start paying back loans or start, you know, progressing your life. Mm-hmm. Uh, which turned into me working for uh, a healthcare company um, in the lab. I had no experience with that mm-hmm. by any means. Obviously, we just talked about me doing music. Um, so, yeah, that was a very big change, obviously. I mm-hmm. um, was trained in, like, some medical stuff. Now, I wasn't the one, like, actually testing stuff. I would receive it and put little uh, barcodes and stuff on it and yeah. send it to the actual professionals who do that. Um, but, yeah, it was, if I can chalk it up to a God thing, I met uh, Cooper Brown, who um, is not is Cooper the band, uh, who I'm in there with. I met him at playing at church, and um, he had asked me if I wanted to, to be in Cooper the band, and I was like, dude, I've heard your stuff. Yeah, I'd love to do it. Um, that was the day that I got called about being an employee of where, where I am now. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it was... The weird thing is, like... Um, when they called me, they were like, yeah, you're going to work second shift. You know, we'll start you off there and see where you go. And I was like, cool, got a job. Awesome. Second shift's going to give me no life, but you got to do what I got to do. And yeah. then that night's when Cooper was like, hey, do you want to be in the band? And I was like, dude, I would love to, but I just got a job and I can't like back out of that job because I got to have it. And then literally the next day, my soon to be boss called me and was like, I don't really know what um, or why, but something's telling me you'd rather work first shift. Um, and you'd work 7 to 3.30 every day. Do you want that? And I was like, oh, uh, yeah. Yes, absolutely, oh, I do. that's so cool, man. Yeah. So, I mean, I like I said, I just chalked it up to a God thing of like yeah. being able to to work that situation out to where in the evenings I could be a musician. I could be a you know a normal person yeah. who didn't have to work in, in the nights. So. Yeah, man, that's pretty crazy how it all kind of fell into place because, like, yeah. you know, you're going to church with Cooper – he asked you if you want to be in the band. At the same time, you get a call working at the same place as Cooper. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's nuts, man. It, it's, yeah. yeah, yeah. You can't really. Yeah, that's that. That's pretty rad, man. Yeah, I, I dig that. Moral of the story: Cooper's in my life way too much. Oh, yeah. He's your man wife. <laughs> He's my we man all have wife. one of them. <laughs> Mine is my brother. That sounds weird. Okay. Moving on. Yeah, I have a real wife. Okay, she's awesome. Got the bling bling on the finger. Yeah, I have a real wife. <laughs> Um, very cool, man. So you hop in into Cooper and the band. What what was the experience like uh, getting started with those guys? Man, it was weird, honestly, because I had never really heard of indie folk rock. Mm-hmm. I was just like, dude, I'm going to be playing some drums. Were it's you not alive in 2009? I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, he was like, he, he sent me the album that he had, uh, he had already recorded a couple of years uh, previously. And uh, I was like, yeah, just listen through this. And... Um, yeah, this is gonna be the stuff that we that we play for a while. Um, in the process of like trying to get some more stuff out there, but you know, learn this, and I did, and like I really liked what I heard. Um, 
but I, I'd never like played it. So like it took a lot of listening for me to be like, oh, so they're okay. It's not just like a do ga do do ga. Like there's more like upbeat, uh, synchronized stuff okay. or syncopated stuff. Excuse me. Um, with like weird random hits and like I would I would watch Cooper as he was playing and he would form these like super weird looking chord shapes that sounded awesome mm-hmm. uh, and I was like oh this is not normal music that I'm like I guess used to listening to like a one four five one yeah. it might be like that but like some giant weird con- like inversions of the chords mm-hmm. and I was like this is this is different I dig it um, so yeah from there just it progressed to me diving into a ton of like indie style music and like at that point i, I knew who switchfoot was mm-hmm. um but i I'd, I'd kind of forgotten that they were a thing and coop was like dude you gotta listen to some switchfoot dairy to move is still like the song of a generation oh yeah that's, absolutely that, to me, that's like one of my top favorite songs ever written yeah um, it's a good one um so i dove into them pretty hard uh and their uh album fading west just come out like six months before okay. before that and uh that I think everyone has an album that kind of like changes their life. That one was it for me because I just, I love all the orchestration. Uh, Chad Butler, the drummer, like he, I feel like he's a very simplistic drummer, which is a good thing because he's just super solid. Yeah. And it, it was, it was really cool to like kind of study him for a little while and figure out what they were doing. Um, and then there's just other bands that I was introduced to, like Colony House. Um, if you're sleeping on Colony House, don't. They're incredible. Um, I'm gonna write that down. I've, yeah, I think I've, I've heard you mention them before. I just yeah. have not jammed. They're them. awesome. Did you cover one of their songs? Is that what? It yeah, is? the first. That, yeah, yeah, that's where yeah. I heard it. Okay. Um, and then a band called Judah and the Lion. Um, I imagine you, you know who they are. They're um, they're a folk hop and roll band. So like the main guy plays acoustic guitar. One of the guys plays a banjo. One of the guys plays mandolin. But they're doing hip hop stuff. That's super cool. It's yeah, it's pretty fantastic. Um, so like that folky side of things, you know, I, I could just hear different, different tones of, or different, uh, ranges of instruments. And I was like, dude, this is really cool. I want to you know, kind of take what I'm learning from listening to these guys and kind of apply it to the drums of what I'm doing for Cooper, the band. So yeah, it, um, there's a ton of listening, a ton of, you know, jamming those guys. That's very cool. Um, I'm glad you did your homework too, before you jumped in the band. Cause, yeah. Uh, for those of you who are pursuing a, a career in, you know, being a working drummer, uh, that's that's the one of the main parts of the job oh, yeah. is knowing your style. Absolutely. You know, if, you, if you walk into a jazz gig and you're playing country, you're screwed. Yeah, you're you know? not going to get hired back. Hired yeah. back. So uh, listening, especially on drums. I mean, I would say listen on every instrument, but I, I definitely do feel like style is what gets you paid on the drum oh, yeah. set. Um, and I feel like with indie too, it, indie gets a lot of. Uh, I feel like indie gets a bad rap in drumming, but people don't realize how uh, much finesse that style of music requires oh, yeah. and how much just insanely complex stuff those dudes are doing mm-hmm. just to fill out that song. And it, it sounds like they make it sound so effortless that you're oh, like, yeah. oh, yeah, it's not hard. Like, Death Cab for Cutie yeah. is a prime example of that. Like, you're like, oh, yeah, he's just playing in the pocket, and then you watch what he's actually doing, and you're like, oh, my God. Oh, no, he is not. Yeah, like, <laughs> he is, but no, he's not. <laughs> yeah, um... There's another drum set uh, player. Oh man, what's that guy saying? It's my friend Zach. He sends it to me. He, I, I'll I'll link it in yeah. the description below. But yeah, this dude is just. It, it's this indie song, and he's like, "Oh yeah, this is the rhythm for it." And it's just like, it's it it was way over my head. And then he <laughs> like he slows it super down. I'm like, okay, that's cool. And then like fast forwards, and it's like 180 beats per minute, and he's just like yeah. flying around this kid. <laughs> But it, underneath this indie song, and it sounds just totally chill. Yeah. Like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very cool, man. Yeah. Mm. So that was cool. Very cool. So you're, in, you know, you, you're in Cooper the band now. Yep. Uh, y'all, y'all, uh, well, had y'all done? How soon in Cooper the band? Uh, I'm butchering this question. Uh, <laughs> you're good. So how long were you in Cooper the band before y'all started working on new material? So we, I think I was in for about a year and a half, uh, and Cooper had written tons of songs. He, you know, I learned those, obviously. Tons of covers that we learned as well. And, like, from the get-go, Cooper was like, I don't want to be a cover band. I'm not a cover artist. You know, I'll play cover songs, but I don't want to be known as a, as, as a cover guy. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, most of the stuff was, you know, Cooper the Band original stuff, and we throw in, like, a Coldplay cover on occasion. Um, Coldplay is a really great band as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, 
so yeah, about a year and a half into it, um, that's when we decided, yeah, we're really gonna like buckle down and write some new stuff because the stuff we have is good, but it's it's pretty old at this point. Um, so you know, got a couple ideas. Cooper's an amazing songwriter. Uh, like I said, he does some really weird chords mm-hmm. that makes it makes them sound fantastic. And uh, you know, he he would play something, and I'd get like a small percussive idea. You know, songs just kind of built upon that. Um, we would either do that first, or he would come up with lyrics first. Or he and Phoebe, the female in our band, they they usually would work on lyrics together and then bring those lyrics to us, just kind of based on life situations, um, mm-hmm. not about things specifically at you know at a certain time, but like they would come up with an idea, come bring it to us, and you know we would all kind of co-write every song that we did, which was fun because um, I'm not a songwriter, mm-hmm. but a couple of a couple of lines in a couple of our songs. Your boy coined, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah that's me." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's my little artistic input yeah. there. Wheels uh, all over that hook. Bow. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a really fun experience. Um, one that I would do again tomorrow if, if I could. Um, yeah, it was, it's, it's a lot of fun. I got you. So did y'all take a break from gigging all together while we're working on the record, or were y'all gigging? In a no, we were still gigging while yeah. we were writing. Um, one thing that Cooper has said multiple times, he's like, if if you want music to be your full-time job, why would you not treat it like a full-time job always? Yeah. Um, so he's like, if you're not working 40 hours a week on music, you can expect not to do it that full-time, mm-hmm. you know? So we would get off of, our, off of work on our day jobs and, like, go home, grab a quick bite to eat, and then come back and start writing together, start practicing, you know, doing whatever, until, like, midnight just about every night for for what seemed like months um all of that you know writing while we were booking shows and we played a ton of like relay for life events Mm -hmm. um which was a lot of fun but it was a lot of late nights you know driving to you know two hours away to play relay for life gig and come back and you know get up the next day and go to work um team no sleep and team coffee became our mantras yeah (laughs) Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was a lot. And then once we realized that, you know, we had some pretty substantial songs that we could do, uh, that we could record and we, we started, uh, thinking about the idea of how we're going to pay for this. So that's when we did our Kickstarter and did the crowdfunding, um, which that in and of itself was a bear. It was, yeah. it was a lot. Um, yeah, I definitely like to, uh, cause I, I want to go a little bit more in depth into that yeah, here in sure. a second. But I do want to, before we go into that, I do want to ask you one thing. If you could, um, for the for the person that's that's doing the grind, that's mm-hmm. doing the work and stuff like that, um, I'm sure that you um, had to have developed some sort of routine, yeah. you know, for like going to work and then going to rehearsal mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So if you could just give us a little like in depth look at like what a typical will day looks like yeah when you're doing when you're when you're pulling the marathon yeah uh and see what you know maybe think of some um uh some routines that you got in to make your life a little bit easier yeah maybe something you would go back and change and stuff like that just kind of walk us through your day in the typical day of like going to work and then straight into rehearsal yeah it was it was nuts um I might have to like redo some of this, so we might have to edit oh, some yeah, we of can, this out. We can cut anything we need to. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, I'd wake up um, probably too late to get to work on time, um, but I, you know, I'd work seven to three thirty at the hospital. Um, oftentimes, like Cooper and I would have lunch together. So like while we were eating lunch, we were just hammering out ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, get off work at three thirty, run home, change clothes, you know, grab a super early dinner or not at all. And um, just head on to Cooper's house to start practicing. Now, one thing that I that I would like to say is like doing that for a long time will burn you out real quick. So you have to have some kind of like self care, self love type stuff. Yeah. So like while I was driving to work, I usually wouldn't listen to music for a while. I throw on a podcast or throw on an audio book or something just so I can escape, even for that ten fifteen minute drive. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when I was at work. Um, I guess on the days we were we were able to listen to music, you know, I would I would listen to some stuff that would kind of help me give get ideas for Cooper the band, and then I would take a break from that and listen to something that I would never want, you know, just to give myself a, a bit of a break, I guess. Um, 
Yeah, and then we go right into rehearsal. And, you know, some rehearsals would be super productive and we get a ton done. Some of it we would just be messing around the whole time just because we're kind of delirious at that point and just, Mm -hmm. you know, just wanted to goof off. But I think a key component to all of that is, like, if you're going to do a grind with one specific band, the band has to be more of a family at that point uh, as opposed to just people playing music together. Because if you're going to dedicate, you know, lots of time to a, th- a thing that four other people are dedicating lots of time to, you got to know those guys pretty well. Yeah. Um, so like you know we knew we knew pretty early on like what got it under each other's skin you know not what what not to do and all that kind of stuff but we just we just we call it a Bramley a, a band friend family type thing. That's cute. Uh, well, yeah, it's it's cute and dumb and stupid, but it's it's fun. Um, so yeah, you know. We would always try not to let any decision we would make like affect us negatively, I guess, mm-hmm. like get in the way of the family aspect of it. Um, so, yeah, really doing the grind with people that you really love and really care about certainly helps a ton. Very cool. So. Yeah, man, I, I really like what you talked about the self-care, giving your ears a break. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if this is a thing. But I, I am a big believer in ear fatigue. Like, oh, my, yeah. my ears get tired. Yeah. And I, I've got to shut stuff off or listen to something else, you know, uh, especially like when you're engineering and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Like, if you're trying to mix and you're just at it for freaking 12 hours, after a while, you're going to come back later and be like, what did I just do? Yeah. That sounds terrible. Yeah. Yeah I, so I, yeah. I like that you, you know, people, I feel like a lot of musicians feel like if you're not, doing that all the time 100 Mm percent, and that's not your sole focus then you're not dedicated enough yeah but sometimes taping taking a step back and giving yourself an ear break or a brain break or something that's kind of part of the dedication yeah yeah, you've got to recharge your batteries or else like you're yeah you're gonna get burned out and Mm -hmm. walk away you know i i I used to do this all the time uh, when i was like gigging teaching and and doing private lessons and stuff as well is like at one day a month, I would collapse. I would yeah. be so fried that I could not get out of bed. Yeah, and that's not how you're supposed to do things, mm-hmm. you know. Like, because that's one. I, I I would waste a whole day, well, at least one day a month. You know, if I'd taken care of myself a little bit better, you know, I might have been better off. Yeah. So I really like that. Um, so everybody, you know, find something that's not music related yeah. to do every once in a while. You know, I I'm a really I really like uh, fitness. I exercise quite a bit. Uh, I run, uh, and then I play disc golf. Disc golf is yeah. my totally uh, not music related. <laughs> like I go out in the woods. I throw frisbees at baskets, <laughs> and I'm just kind of you know, hang out. Yeah, I'm terrible at it, but I love it because it it has nothing to do with music. Yeah. So yeah, find find your one non music thing. Kind of going on, or compounding on top of that. It's also really important to have friends who are not in the music scene as well. Um, there's a group of friends that I hang out with that like Cooper kind of adopted me into their friend group, I guess, but he and I are the only ones that are doing music stuff. The rest of them, like one owns a PC shop, one's a, uh, a contract, like carpenter type person. Um, but they've known each other for years and they were just like, Hey, you're going to be in our group now. We're going to go do random shenanigans and drive to Memphis at like 11 PM and hang out. Is okay. That, is that? That one night I saw you at Rail Garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was, man, that was an interesting night. I'm not going to go into that. But <laughs> <laughs> We're going to keep it PG. PG, so. yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I just I think it's really important that you you have to give yourself a mental break. As, as much as you you know, I want to do this all the time. Doing it all the time is going to wear on you pretty quick. Very cool. So, um, and I like how you talked about. Uh, if you're if you're gonna you know some some people you know they're freelancers. I'm a lot more of a freelancer uh, than I am stuck with one band mm-hmm. just because like um, I can kind of afford to yeah in uh, in my amounts of musical things. Uh, but people that you know some people they do they want a band they want that to be their thing and they, yeah. they want to be all about it. You've got to be prepared to spend a lot of time with each other. Yeah, you got to be prepared to resolve conflict you know yeah that's a that's a big thing that we had to learn pretty quick it's like if, if we're gonna be hanging out on time go on tour to canada for 10 days straight you know you're, you're gonna get frustrated pretty quick especially when you start adding in like driving time and like being in a van for hours upon end like just little tiny things can start kind of wearing on you about other, each other's personalities 
So you really have to love the people you're around if you're going to be dedicated to that one thing. Yeah. Did y'all have yeah. any kind of set conflict resolution method, or did y'all just like talk stuff out? Like, yeah, don't we're a bit angry. <laughs> it's it's kind of like that. We, um, as anyone else would, with other people, at some point you're going to get frustrated. Mm-hmm. But we kind of established early on. It's like, look, if you're if you're frustrated with me, if I've done something, don't don't hold it in. Just let me know. That way, I know how to fix it. Yeah. Or that, uh, that way I know what not to do next time or what kind of, you know. I like that. What kind of whatever. So, yeah, we established that pretty early on. Like, Joe, if you've got a problem with me, I don't want you stewing on it for days on end. And me, I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Like, if I said something that was offensive in, a, in, in jest or as a joke or whatever, tell me. Sorry, I won't do it again. So, yeah. it's really important to have those kinds of conversations. So. Very, very cool, yeah. I like I like how y'all set that early on. You know, because being in a band is kind of like being married. Yeah. Like, you're going to spend a lot of time with each other. Everybody is weird and gross. <laughs> and at some point, yeah. you're going to experience somebody's weirdness and grossness. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, good. I really like that. Okay, so, you know, we're going to jump into the DIY thing now. Yeah. Um, so was that the plan early on with the band, like, we're not going to do the label thing. We're going to do what we want. Or... Yeah, that was that was kind of the thing because like more and more bands nowadays are are not going the traditional you know get signed to a label route. They're doing a DIY or DI hire a booking agent or DI hire a manager, but not mm-hmm. nece- not necessarily do all that through a label. Um, so that was that was kind of our our plan. Um, Something you mentioned earlier before the, we started playing was like when you were learning guitar, you're like, well, I'm not going to rely on somebody else to do this, so I'm just going to learn it myself, and you started playing guitar. Kind of kind of the same concept here. Um, Cooper especially was like, well, nobody owes me anything, so if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it for me. So, you know, we all kind of bought into that and, you know, pitch in as much as we can to to take the load off of one person for like yeah. for like booking and making sure we get paid and merch and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I think I think that's very cool uh, that you touched on that. Um, you know, if you're a DIY band, then and you and you're not gonna go the label route. A, a label essentially is a team yeah. that works for you. So if you're you know if you're not gonna be a label, then you've got to be your own team. <coughs> team, and I yeah. emphasize that word uh, pretty you know pretty critically because um, you know a lot of bands. Nowadays, they, they want to do the DIY thing, or one person in the band is like, "All right, I want to do the DIY thing. Mm-hmm. Let's all do it." You know, but like, it's it's got to be it's got to work together. Oh yeah, you know, Absolutely. unless you, you know, if you want to be a solo artist, it's all on you, and you just got to deal with it. Yeah, but if y'all are a band, y'all got to share the load. Yeah, so we we do that both on and off stage. Like, uh, I guess when it comes to like musicians itself, like they everyone in the band considers me the the band director because I've got experience with yeah. all that kind of stuff. So yeah. like, I would. I wouldn't necessarily make musical calls of like what chords to play when, but you know, whenever we were playing together and um, playing a verse or chorus, and then like somebody can't remember uh, like a bridge that's coming up, they would always look to me and I would like give them the eye, and they were like, yeah. "Oh yeah, that's the bridge." You throw know? them some eyebrows. Yeah, that's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> throw some brows. I'll yeah, throw some eyebrows. Um, so that was that was kind of my role. Um, Cooper was more the the business side of things like he was very creative as well uh, mm-hmm. or is very creative um but he was very business oriented phoebe is the face because she's gorgeous and has an amazing voice and like she's the face of cooper the band mm-hmm. um joe is probably uh, he, i would consider him the producer so like we would always run run ideas through him um hey you know what, what can we what can we do different or what what sounds good here and he was like yeah cool think about it like this and you know that would kind of helped drive what we were doing uh matt was a band dad um dad jokes uh he's the bass player (laughs) (laughs) um yeah he yeah he would do do like that keep the keep the mood pretty light because you know when you're grinding you can get things can get pretty tense pretty quick so he was that was the the mood lightener i guess there to break the tension yeah he and our facebook friends and his dad jokes are they're pretty on point. Oh yeah, They're, oh, yeah. yeah. He's spot on. He's not even a dad. Really? Yeah, he, he he has a dog who he considers to be his his son, I guess. But um, <laughs> side tangent about Matt, he uh, sent us a video in the band chat uh, two days ago. He completely decked out his house in Christmas lights oh, and synced it up to like the Greatest Showman songs. 
No, that's so beautiful. I was like, "You're such a dad," because <laughs> dads do that hard. Uh, that, that I, I can I can appreciate. That. <laughs> yeah, that's very cool. It, it yeah, was, it was cool. Uh, and I, did y'all set out to find these roles, or did it just kind of fit with everybody's personality? It kind of just fit with everyone's personality. Um, me as the band director, I was also the uh, the pack mule of the band. Like, I mean, you know how it was at UTN. Whenever we would load up U-Haul trucks to go on yeah. tour for a weekend or whatever, you know, I I got really good at playing Tetris. At this point, I could fit a Cadillac in the shoebox if I had to. Yeah. So like, it was always like, all right, we're gonna load the trailer. I'm in charge. You put that there. Nope. Stop talking. Yada yada. We got to get this done so we can get on the road. Yeah. I always tell people in college, I majored in loading gear. Yeah. And, and minored in music. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, we we move. You move way. You, uh, it, but sh- I mean, if you're a musician, you listen to this. You know, you just, if if you're a singer, shut up. Because <laughs> everybody else has a way more gear than you. No, yeah. that's why I started playing guitar and singing. Like I was like, I'm gonna start playing guitar and singing for my own band because I'm tired of hollering drums. I'm tired around. of hollering drums. Yeah, <laughs> my life is so much that's, easier. Now. I guess that, that's what I would say is yeah. the worst part about playing drums is they have so much equipment. Oh yeah. So very cool. Uh, I like I like how that kind of came up, you know, your your personalities fit uh, the different roles in the yeah. band, and everybody kind of takes on those roles. Uh, so into the DIY thing, y'all did a Kickstarter for your record. We um, did, which you, was um, interesting. <laughs> so we're gonna talk a little bit about social media real quick. Okay, what was uh, what would you consider your your biggest platform? Because I'm learning that different artists have different platforms. You know, our our first episode was with Mike, who's an electronic artist yeah. doing grit spitting thing, and Instagram is his bread and butter. Like Instagram and SoundCloud, yeah, he's all over it. Mm-hmm. Facebook, you know, is not his not his deal. And I feel like for somebody in his market, you know, doing electronic music, most of the people that are going to find his music are going to be on Instagram and SoundCloud, yeah. and they're not really going to care about Facebook, yeah. Uh, we, we actually didn't have an Instagram or a Twitter up until about a year and a half ago, probably. Really? Uh, if we had it, it we didn't do much on it at all. Um, our, our main thing was Facebook for the longest. I mean, it, it still is. We still push content out, content out on Facebook a lot, but taking on more of the, the Instagram role, um, it's, you know, it's a, it's a great social media site, especially if you run it as a business page, which you can do the same thing for Facebook, um. What I, one thing I really love about social media, um, I guess if we're doing like the effort side, is like if you can you can post something on Instagram and you can set it up to where it pushes it out on Facebook. So you just post it once and it goes to different sites, oh, yeah. which is super helpful. Um, but yeah, so we would we would. Uh, I guess the main thing about social media is you got to have content, mm-hmm. tons of photos and videos, and just anytime you're playing a show, you know, hire a photographer, or, you know, who's a, whoever might be a friend that does photography and, you know, buy them dinner or something, be like, Hey, can you come shoot our show for, for whatever, you know, we, yeah. we would take those photos and, you know, put cute little captions underneath it or whatever, just something yeah. to kind of like bring people in. Um, um, I would, I would like to add a quick side note on that. I yeah. do feel like, uh, the band photographer, if you can have a photographer, that's like a, fifth or sixth member of the band yeah i feel like that's super efficient but you know honestly with a lot of bands that are starting out um if you're playing for a door and you think you're gonna make more than 100 bucks uh you know around 100 bucks you can throw it in the band fund and save up and this that, and the other but honestly i think a lot of times especially on the front end since we're in such a content driven uh, day and age, mm-hmm. that hundred bucks. Most photographers will do a hundred bucks for a live sesh. They'll come. They'll come take. You know, or uh, I know a lot of photographers. Like, yeah. if you say, "Hey, like hundred bucks is yours if you come do a sesh and like come do pictures for our concert." Yeah, you know, like I think that's a hundred dollars very very well spent. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, rather than you know putting in the band fund for gas money one day, this that and the other, or yeah. you know saving up to buy a PA. You know, I think. I don't know. Uh, that's my personal opinion. I would I, I would agree with that. A hundred dollar, you know, if you're making a hundred dollars off the door, uh, it, I think it's a definitely a wise investment to go ahead and see if you can uh, book a photographer. Yeah, to come do some live stuff. So like, you. kind of expounding upon that, if you're if a photographer comes and takes like seventy photos while you're playing a, an hour long set, you know, some of them might not be that great, but you're pretty much guaranteed to get at least probably fifty good photos. Mm-hmm. Uh, now whether they edit those photos or you take them back and edit, edit them yourself. That's still fifty opportunities around fifty or whatever to post that on social media to get your stuff out there. Yeah. So like one one hundred dollar session for a good, uh, photographer come to film or take photos, um, it's very well 
yeah. very well money well spent. Yeah, I like how you said it because it ain't you know, you know boiling it down fifty photos, two bucks a photo. Yeah, it's not too bad. No, yeah. not at all. Two bucks a photo to potentially grow your fan base. Yeah. Um, would you say uh, I was just thinking about this because uh, Cooper the band you're you're based Jackson and Nashville. Yeah. So y'all y'all got split. this. Yeah, y'all got the y'all got the smallish town to gigantic city <laughs> kind of thing going. Uh, do you really think that demographic is why Facebook is your bread and butter? Um, or did it just kind of start with Facebook? It just kind of started with Facebook. Like Cooper the Band was already a Facebook page. Cooper the Band's all one word, by the way. If you do Cooper space, the space, band space, you'll pull up like a random old guy band in Finland. Whoa. Which is <laughs> which is pretty. I think funny. I just became their biggest <laughs> fan. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. So yeah, Facebook was just just already a thing, and we, we used that for a while. Well, Cooper um, the Band's they've been around for a little while. Yeah, uh, I think Coop Coop started it in I, th- I think 2012. I got you. Um, just as him. Um, and he just went as Cooper you know, on stage or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he, he never wanted it to be a solo project. Um, so he would you know hire out his friends to come play. You know, he, when he was living in Nashville at the time, he'd hire out his friends and his roommates and all that to come play, and that became the band. I got so I asked him, I was like, why is Cooper the band the name? Like, I don't care. Your name could be on it. That's, that's your baby. I, I get it. That's totally fine. Uh, and he was like, well, the, the website... There was no website done name already named Cooper the band, so that's why I just like threw that together. Uh, he's like, "Yeah, I'm Cooper, and this is the band," and that's it just cool. kind of stuck. I like it, man. No, yeah, it's very, it's very creative too. <laughs> uh, and that's that's actually the next thing I wanted to dive into. So you know, we're gonna back we we kind of got a little sidetracked on the social media thing, but yeah, uh, sorry. no, that was that was all me. Um, so going back to the Kickstarter, what uh, would you say or some of your more creative marketing campaigns for for that Kickstarter project because you know we we're swimming in Kickstarters now. Yeah. What what, what set your kick? What do you think set your Kickstarter apart? Um, I think having really good content. Um, we had a videographer to come, you know, film a couple of our videos uh, or a couple of our shows, and it helps that Cooper is a, a videographer in and of himself. So he he was able to take that footage and put together some really really good uh, videos for us. So we used that a lot. Uh, we had an old-fashioned route of having business cards made up and the QR code on the back that went to our Kickstarter. Um, That's cool. Yeah, um, went to our Kickstarter website. We actually drove to, uh, gosh, I would not do this again, on a Tuesday. We drove on a Tuesday after work to Louisville, Kentucky to take photos with a guy named Jacob Roberts, who's an amazing photographer. Uh, he he does stuff. We well, all drove to Louisville. Yeah, on like a two, six hours, six like seven, four and a half hours. Oh yeah, because y'all one are, way. Y'all are north. Y'all are norther than I. <laughs> y'all are norther. Farther north than I <laughs> norther. I like yeah. that. Uh, so yeah, it was. The situation was dumb. You know, people you know, couldn't get off off of work and get out of school. So we were like, all right, guys, this is gonna really suck. But we're gonna drive to Louisville on a Tuesday. We got there at nine p.m. Did photos for you know an hour and a half, and then drove back. I think I got home at like three a.m. and had to be at work at seven thirty or seven the next morning. It was rough. I'm miserable just thinking about. Yeah, that. it was it was not a fun time. Week, um, weeknight stuff like that is always the worst. Oh yeah, I remember playing shows. That's why I don't do shows on a weeknight. Yeah, dude, I'm I'm pushing thirty. <laughs> I like I don't know. In my opinion, like if it's a, if it's a gig, you know if. if Snarky Puppy called me and I was like, hey, dude, we're playing Mingle with Wednesday. You want to come play some acoustic songs? They would never do that. But if they did, <laughs> I would be like, yeah, I'm taking a sick day. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm I, out. Yeah. Yeah. I did, you know, uh, The Eclipse. Yeah. La- last year, we got an opportunity to play at a state park in the uh, path of totality. So we got oh, paid nice. 500 bucks to go play like a two hour set yeah that night, camp out and then the next morning watch the eclipse. That's dope. So I took a personal day, dude. I was oh, like, yeah. heck yeah. No, like, that's... No, yeah, absolutely. I don't blame you. So uh, I don't know. But yeah, stuff like that is do you feel like it was worth doing? Oh that? absolutely. Cool. The photos we got were incredible. Um the my favorite one is the one that we actually use on the album cover. Um Oh that's what the, those were those yeah, photos. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. So and very little of the photo on that album cover is post work. Most of it was done in camera. 
Oh, wow. Which is, which is nuts. That just proves the testament to how good Jacob is. Um, he had a projector, and he projected like a like a woods scene onto us while we were standing there, and he did, does his voodoo magic of photography, and it looked incredible. Um, so, yeah, very well worth the misery of driving to Louisville, Kentucky uh, cool. on a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, I think that's cool, and I, I think that's a really good testament to your judgment too. You know, I, I know a lot of guys. I, I, I think you do need to have a uh, – when you're pushing your career forward, you do need to have that certain litmus test of like, is this worth being miserable tomorrow? Yeah. Or are we just spinning our wheels? Yeah. Because you know, I, I, you know, I know people. I've seen people that they'll take every gig that comes through the door. Mm-hmm. But it's it's a lot of times it's the same gig. And yeah. You're playing at the same venue for the same twenty people who are at the last one. You know, and if 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 you're doing that every night and having to go to work the next day, yeah. that's. That could be time spent doing photo shoots, yeah. doing social networking, rehearsing. You know, uh, that's my philosophy when it comes to booking a gig too. Yeah. Like I won't, I won't book a gig if it's the same gig that I've done before. Yeah. You know, um, if it's if it's something, if it's a band that can, I think, can move us forward, or if it's somewhere we've never played, mm-hmm. or it pays really well, or it pays really well, <laughs> or it pays, really or it pays well. really yeah, well. Like yeah. I'll play the same gig every night if yeah. it pays really right. well. <laughs> Uh, but no, if it you know if it's moving you forward professionally, I think that should be the the biggest question. Yeah. Or or could your time be better served doing something else? Yeah. I, I had the same discussion with my brother uh, the other night because we were talking about doing something uh, next year, and he was like, you know, should we do this or should we not? And I was just like, can our time be better served doing something else? If the answer is no, then we're going. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and I, that's the big, big litmus test. And I think it was totally worth it, man. Those pictures turned out fantastic. Yeah, thanks, so, man. Um, so shout good. out to Jacob. He's a boss. Hi, Jacob. If you're Hi, watching, Jacob. <laughs> can we be friends? No. <laughs> um, yeah, we actually met Jacob um, a couple of months before that. He was living in Nashville at the time, and I think on like a Wednesday night, we we drove up to Nashville to get photos made for the Kickstarter campaign. Actually, um, so the business cards that we handed out, one of them had a photo. Our one photo was on one side and the uh, QR code with what it was was on the other. So that's how we met Jacob. And I think he he, had, he was from Louisville. I think it's Louisville. It's not, yeah, it's Louisville, not Lexington. Louisville, and he lived in Nashville for a while, for a while and then he, he moved back. Um, we realized he moved back. We were like, dang. Yeah, we're still going to go to him. He's he's incredible. So That's awesome. I guess all that to say, you really have to do your research. Um, cause you know, we look through tons of band f- photographers that, you know, their job is to go mm-hmm. photograph bands at shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jacob, he'd done some band stuff, but like we found his stuff online and the stuff that he was doing could lend itself to group photos for a band. Um, and they looked incredible. So we were like, you know, we're going to, we're going we're gonna to pull the, pull the trigger and go for it. So yeah. I think that was a good, good idea. And, and, you know, sometimes having, uh, a band photographer is is a great idea, but sometimes you know taking a risk with somebody yeah. like you're talking about is like he's doing he's a he's a group fo- like he does group photos, but not necessarily like band photos. Yeah, you know, but it definitely worked out in your favor. Yeah, uh, very cool, man. Any other uh, some some content promo content on pushing the front out content? End yeah, that, that's a big that's cool. a big thing. Uh, any other creative marketing things that y'all did? Um, just, we when we, when we were doing our when the Kickstarter was open for people to, to donate, um, we would play a show every day. I like that. Which. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. I remember that now. The the thought of playing a show every day is crazy. Now, some days uh, it would be like a legit show with PA system, full drum kit. Some days, most days were, hey, we're going to be, like last night on social media, going to be in front of Panera at 7 p.m. Come hang out with us. Or... We're leaving Panera. We're going to go to insert whatever restaurant who will let us come and like busk outside for 30 minutes. Um, and we would always do like a Facebook Live or Instagram Live uh, while we were doing that. So, you know, we, the the live uh, social media audience would be watching while random people were walking by and be like, oh, this is cool. You know, what's going on here? And we would explain to them what we were doing. And uh, sometimes we would have our old CD um that we, we would just hand out and be like, you know, this is what it sounds like now. These songs you're hearing right now are a very acoustic version of what we're going to be putting out. So think about what that could sound like and give us money. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so, yeah, I like that. Yeah, it was a lot. Um, Preview of coming attractions kind of thing. Yeah. Very yeah, cool, man. It was fun. 
Um, anything going back to the Kickstarter that you're like, man, we ain't doing that again, uh, any, or anything that you, you tried and you know it maybe needs to be refined, or you're just gonna scrap it. Um, just a thought. Like we we set a minimum goal to raise ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars. We ended up raising thirteen, which was awesome. Yeah, that's all. Wow. Um, yeah, which was great. Not all of that was through Kickstarter. Some of it was, you know, people just write us checks and here you go. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess the thought of like asking people for money is weird to me. Mm-hmm. It's like this is my project. I should probably be funding this. But on the on the flip side of that token, like because people donated and because you know they are supporting us, it, it really showed that what we were doing in Jackson musically was making an impact on people's lives. Yeah. Um, so that that was really cool. And I guess kind of going upon that, um, one one thing that we always have said, um, the music career that we're we're building as group of the band is not necessarily for us. It's for like if we can go play a show and somebody can leave there feeling happy or feeling loved or forget about whatever problem they're having for the hour that they watch us. That's that's what we consider a win. Um, so I guess like. With that mentality going to the Kickstarter, people, I guess, showering that love back on us by like mon- like with money, it was very well received. It was weird to be like, oh, I'm taking your money, yeah. but I'm going to continue, you know, making this cool music so you can keep keep feeling loved. I guess yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, I you know, I chipped in on the Kickstarter. I never once felt like I was like I'm helping my friends. I was like I'm buying something from yeah. you. Like I and you know, I think that's another thing to be said too. Like a lot of Kickstarters too, you're not necessarily begging for money a lot of yeah. people are buying things from you yeah they're that's, just that's true they're just paying you on the front end yeah and they get it back later yeah know? so we, we had a lot of uh like really a, cool merch things that we would send out yeah um, i really liked uh, you know pretty much everything i saw that y'all were doing was very very cool um and i you know i, I think uh a, a kickstarter diy uh, something from you would be something very cool. You know, you can sit down with Cooper if yeah. you want to do it. Uh, and that might be our Patreon exclusive. If okay. You do that. Yeah, like I can maybe, talk to him. And maybe like a, a DIY exclusive on, you know, an effective Kickstarter. Because yeah. I, I think, you know, most bands that do a Kickstarter, you know, they set the bar, you know, like thousand bucks and stuff like that. And a lot of them, man, don't have it. Like the fact that y'all, you know, came up with 13 grand. Yeah. Which like is that's crazy. That's legit Kickstarter. Like, yeah. like, that's one of the more incredible Kickstarters that I know of. Thanks. You know, so I think there's definitely a lot uh, to be said about how y'all did things. Yeah. Um, and then we'll we'll die. I, you know, we'll, we'll let a lot of that. We'll leave a lot of that for the Patreon exclusive. Yeah, that work. Uh, to to funding a successful Kickstarter. So uh, you and I had this conversation last night. You know, like. Your Cooper Cooper the band is still doing the Cooper the band thing. Yeah. Um, but you're also starting to branch out a little bit yeah. further um, and, and do the the freelance thing a little bit more. Yeah. Right? You mentioned earlier, like, well, what exactly did you mention? I forgot what you mentioned. I forgot to. <laughs> we can edit this out. Yeah, we'll edit that out. <laughs> um, well, dang. I look really dumb on camera right now. We'll, we'll, yeah, edit this out. All right. Uh, the wait is over. Is that working? No. Uh, I no. do want to talk about that. Yeah, but we'll yeah, come we back can to do that, that for sure. Uh, so yeah, you, you're putting the feelers out about being a freelance artist now. Yeah, it's um, one thing, especially as a musician, is like I am. Though I love Cooper the band, we're a Bramley, a band family thing. I'm not ex- exclusively connected to that only. Mm-hmm. Like because I play drums and I you know play percussion hire me you know what i mean like i've got to make i gotta make a living doing stuff yeah um so that's that's kind of what a lot of people i don't think i don't think realize that like musicians want to play music now if they're playing music with their friends and they, they love doing that that's awesome but that doesn't mean they can't do it with other groups as well yeah. um so yeah i've uh, started doing this thing called the wait is over um i guess we can dive into this yeah now. We're jump in um so i've I guess since going to college, I gained way too much weight, and uh, I'm I'm tired of it. <laughs> so I, I started this thing, like, you know, whenever, a couple of months ago, uh, Andrew Adams, a buddy of mine, you know, Andrew, mm-hmm. uh, was living in Jackson. We'd go work out every day, um, and I loved it. It was fun. I was losing weight. It was, it was, it was great. 
Then I got really unmotivated around New Year's because I was like, 4 a.m. is a great time to be asleep right now. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I kind of stopped the whole working out thing and trying to lose weight, which which made me realize, like, if I'm going to, if I'm going to, like, stick with, like, trying to be healthier, I need to have a, a goal in mind and not just uh, aimlessly go for it. So I decided I wanted to do this thing that I'm calling the weight is over, uh, W-E-I-G-H-T, a uh, little word play. Yeah, that's um, cool. So like once a month, I w- I'm going to record a music, uh, a drum cover of me playing, you know, whatever song that I pick, um, just so mainly for me so I can see myself slimming down month to month. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, I wanted to put it out on social media just so, like, you know, people thrive off of encouragement. You know, if, if people yeah. are seeing what you're doing, you know, that helps you out mentally. So, so yeah, that's fun. I'm in month three right now. Um, things have been crazy lately, so I haven't been in the gym as much as I need to be. Um, but so far, it's working. You yeah, know, that's it's, cool. It's going I, well. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad it's helping you stick with it, too. I think, yeah. I think that's a really creative way and a very positive way thing that you're putting out you know thanks like, you know it's it, it's like a, a really really fancy before and after shot yeah yeah uh, and in, in the in the coolest way possible too yeah like you're sharing your love of music while also staying motivated yeah uh that's very cool um so jumping into the the freelance thing a little bit so you you know when you got out of school and you started working and you got in the cube with the band um you know we had talked about like that was the thing mm-hmm. you, know, you 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 like eat, sleep, and breathe. Yeah, and I feel like uh, a lot of bands um, are kind of like a startup, like mm-hmm. for a small business, especially nowadays. Uh, and that you could kind of consider that time like your startup time. Yeah, you know, like you 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 had to grind too many hours and all <laughs> that stuff, and now you're at the point to where like a lot of your a lot of your stuff is more automated now yeah. than it used to be. Like yeah. y'all don't have to rehearse twelve hours a day on right. night because you know a lot of your music's already written. You yeah. get a record out there and stuff like that. Uh, so that affords you the more it affords you the opportunity to start branching out as yeah, a for sure as a, a gigging musician. So I think that was a very smart move. You know, yeah, I think so uh, as well. Whether you did it intentionally or not, yeah. I'm just busting your chops a little bit. <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> now uh, I, I think like musically as well, like the the things that I've learned. As a musician, from like grinding so hard with Cooper the band, I, I can definitely take those skills and apply them to something else. So, like when I graduated college, uh, if, you know, just take a simple thing like staying in time or play, praying, praying, playing with a click, praying um, with a click. <laughs> <laughs> Our Father who art in heaven, eighty beats per minute. Sorry. <laughs> that was good. That needs to stay in there. <laughs> oh man. Uh, all right. <laughs> um, like playing with a click or like having a solid time, you know, that doesn't just apply to Cooper the Band stuff. You know, mm-hmm. that, that applies to all music that I play. So whether that be for the church I play for or insert whatever band that wants to hire me, like that's that's probably one of my main things as a drummer that I, like all the other drummers out there that might be listening. Uh, if you don't have a good sense of time, you're probably not going to get up, get called back. Mm-hmm. Like, you just got to be super solid with time. Um and like for me, like knowing where the eighth note is always really helps me cool. keep keep that solid time. Um, but yeah, you apply that to all musical situations you're in. Typically, you're going to get a phone call saying, "Hey, we want you to come back and you know play the show with us or whatever." Yeah, I'm gonna get um, on a rant real quick. Practice with the metronome. Amen. If you play drum. If you play music, amen. guys, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a whole expose on this one day. <laughs> Like metronomes are not evil. They don't take the soul out of your music. That's yes. Okay, they're absolutely. a tool to make you better. Like metronomes are not evil. Okay, you you can you can turn the metronome off when you're play, like when you're doing a performance. But if you're in a practice room, play with the metronome. Yeah, just do it. It's gonna make you better. It's yep. gonna help you pace your practice. Uh, tangent over. I'm not gonna do. <laughs> I'm, I could rant for days. Play with uh, a click. Yeah. Play with a click. Metronomes are good. They are your friend. They are. Okay. I, I, I never mind. We're getting in the weeds. All right. <laughs> so very cool, man. So yeah, grinding out definitely uh, made you a more versatile and made way more higher hireable a musician. Yeah, for sure. Uh, for putting that work in on the front end. So, yeah, it was a very very cool idea. And and you know that might be some good advice for somebody who is um, looking for looking to start their career as a yeah. freelance musician. You know, it might just be best for you to just find one band. And just grind it out with them, and then once y'all hit that level, 
to where a lot of it's more automated. Yeah. Because you know that's where Cooper the band is now. Then you can start putting some feelers out. Yeah. You know, that's a ve- that's a very cool strategy. Yeah. Uh, Which doesn't mean you're going to take away from like the band you grind yeah. grinded with so far. It just means that. Because that's you know on autopilot at some point you know to some degree you can actually like focus on other things and still come back to that yeah and it still be just as solid yeah I think that's a really cool thing and I think you know I think uh, the music I don't want to say industry but the music world is is moving that way because I remember back when I was in high school it was like you're in one band yeah and you eat sleep breathe and that lead the band, band. Yeah, yeah like if you if you do anything with anybody else, you're cheating on the band. Yeah. You can you can play at this, and you can play a praise band at church, and that is and it. That is it, yeah. And, uh, yeah. That's just and, not realistic anymore. Yeah, yeah, now, like, everybody in my band is in another band, yeah. you know, and I'm in several, well, I was, but, uh, you know, I still do fill-in work and stuff like yeah. that. And, no, you know, we're all trying to pay the bills. Like, you know, you, at some point, you... Your pride got, has to get out of the way if you're trying to make money in music. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I was watching this interview with uh, Rich Redman, who's a drummer for Jason Aldean. And I'm, I'm not much of a country guy, but I have a lot of respect for Rich because he's, he's done it. Um, but the interview, that um, the segment that I saw, he was saying in, like, 98 when he moved to Nashville, um, he was playing with 27 different bands at one point, at one time. And I was like, dude, that is nuts. Yeah, that's like, bonkers. Because, like, one band's going to have... You know, probably two hundred songs they know, mm-hmm. whether it's you know mainly got like covers or originals or whatever. But a lot of those are cross over to other bands. But that's just a ton of music all the time. Yeah, uh, which I was very impressed with. I was like, dude, I have a hard time keeping up with my band. Like, I don't know how you're doing at twenty seven. Um, but yeah, I, just, I thought that was interesting. You know, kind of going back to being being versatile, knowing your style. You know, knowing what to play, when to play, or when not to play. Mm-hmm. Uh, that plays a huge role in like what gigs you're gonna get, what gigs you're, what gigs you're gonna keep. Yeah. So I, th- I think you're a very good example of what it means to, uh, you know, I said I said the same thing in uh, Keith's podcast last week. Um, like you, there is no substitute for being proficient on your instrument. Oh yeah. Uh, whether it's you know you know my brother was on the Voice because he was good on his instrument first. Mm-hmm. You know he he wasn't just an average singer. And then eventually they were like, oh, you want to be on TV? Here, you can be awesome now. Here you, you know? go. <laughs> you know, and same thing for you. Like, you took the time to be good at your instrument. And now, like, you know, the phone is ringing. Yeah, thanks, and, man. I and, appreciate and, that. And, you're, and you're, putting, uh, you're putting out great content, and you're doing really positive work. Uh, but, like I said, you took the time to be good first. Yeah. You know, a lot of people really want to jump the gun. Now, yeah. you know, if you want to play, like, a, you know, a certain style or something like that, I'm not saying, like, you know... Uh, don't play that style, but I feel like uh, a lot of people want to jump the gun. Or uh, this is, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to like throw anybody on the bus or get too ranty, but I do feel like it's really easy to uh, use lack of musical ability uh, and call it art, you know? Yeah. Uh, and dude, you, like, I'm a big fan of weird music. Most mm-hmm. of the, there's plenty of stuff I listen to that people are like, what is this? <laughs> what are you doing? And you know, like if you want to make, if you want to make a certain sound, make sure you make it on purpose. Don't yeah. make it from lack of ability and then yeah. call it art. You know, yeah, that's, sure. that's not how we do things here. Um, but yeah, you, you really did. You took the time to be good at your instrument and focused on that. And then that's when the phone started ringing, which is very cool. Yeah. It's it had, certainly helpful. <laughs> yeah. Um, so cool. Uh, any closing thoughts, man? Uh, we we touched on a lot. We you know we touched on effective Kickstarter. Um, what? Oh, we didn't talk about going on tour, man. Yeah, that was a whirlwind, man. That was that was nuts. So how did you book your tour? Uh, yeah, we we got a little bit of time. Right, cool. We get we'll uh, uh and I'll edit some of this out. Okay. Um, so how did you go about booking your tour, man? Yeah, that was, uh, I guess, kind of going back to the part where, like, if you're going to be a DIY, DIY band or do-it-yourself entity, you have to be a team. Um, so we we really took on roles. Each one of us took on a specific role. So, like, for example, Cooper's role was usually to find, um, find the city that we could potentially go to. And from there, all of us would research venues. Like, we would each, you know, come up with, like, five venues in that city. Uh, sometimes the venues would overlap, like I would find one that Matt had found or whatever. Um, and then from there it would just, it would just go to like 
we had like one email kind of typed out and we would save a draft of that like a, a hello blank you know so we could just insert the band or the the venue name uh and like we're going to be coming through the town you know these dates so a lot of it was just like just sending tons of emails making sure that you updated it to that specific venue um one thing that we learned is like get comfortable with the word no because we we ended up booking a 10-day tour um we played nine of the 10 days so we played nine venues we probably sent out 300 emails for that tour mm-hmm. so that I mean that kind of tells you that like lots of venues won't even respond yeah lots of venues will respond people are like no nope, sorry we're booked up and then the few that do respond, they're like, yeah, love your stuff. Um, you know, let's make it happen. That's that's when you're able to be like, dope. We're playing this, you know, we're playing this city. So once we found the cities we were playing in, uh, it was kind of kind of my role to find bands from that city. Um, so there's a band we played with in Kingston, Canada called The Wilderness, which they're phenomenal. You should check, check them out if you haven't. Um, I found them on Facebook, and I was like, these dudes look awesome. So that was like a like a Facebook uh, cover video that was kind of looping through. They had like tour dates, so just like a montage of them playing playing a bunch of shows and doing random shenanigans in life. And um, and we ended up booking two shows with them while we were in Canada. Um, which because they're from there, they already had like local support, mm-hmm. so people would come out to the show and we would get benefit from that because people were there to see the wilderness, but. We play. We would play before them, so people would usually show up and watch our set too. Um, so it's really important to have somebody or multiple people finding a city, multiple people finding venues, and multiple people finding bands to play with you. Yeah. I really um, like that strategy too. Is like, all right, here's the city. All right, everybody find five instead yeah. of like you find two hundred. You know? Right. Yeah. I, I really like that, and because uh, that's just, that's hours of work. Even like if. if we five found five venues, you know, that's that's probably an hour and a half each for one city. Mm-hmm. But, like, you throw all that time onto one person, you know, it, it becomes a lot. Yeah. It becomes a whole lot. Um, uh, talk, talking about the wilderness, too, that that was a really cool strategy that you guys use. And I've heard a couple of bands do it before, is, like, if you're, if you're, book, if you're playing with a, with a local band, mm-hmm. talk to them about going second. Yeah. You know, like, open for, like, don't be like, we're touring, so we should headline. Right, you know, like, yeah. Be the opener because that's when the most people are going to be there. Yeah, because they're going to be, you know, they'll get you. You know, they're if if the local band plays first, they're not going to stick around for your set. Right. Yeah. So, so what? What the cool thing about the wilderness is like we met them in Canada when we left. You know, we we crashed on their floor. Super great guys. Mm-hmm. Um, crashed on their floor when we left. We were like, dang, we're not going to see them again. They were a lot of fun to be around. Um. So that was in March, and then fast forward to the summer. We find out they're doing a, uh, an American tour, like a month and a half long DIY type stuff that we're doing, but way longer. Um, find out in August they were going to be coming through Tennessee, and they had like several dates open that they were going to be in Tennessee, but we didn't have uh, gigs yet. So we were like, dude, let's just do a week-long tour with the Wilderness. So from there, like uh, Jonas, their front man, he was kind of their band manager type person. He is he is the Cooper of that band, I guess. Um, Jonas the band. Jonas the band. <laughs> Shout out to Jonas. He's he's amazing. Um, now he and Cooper would like collaborate and be like, "All right, we're gonna figure out a venue in this city." Cooper, what, what how, who who do you know in these cities? You know that could that could help us out. So, ended up booking a five day tour with them, um, which was amazing. It was a ton of fun. Uh, and we got to see our dudes from Canada again for yeah, for a week, so it was it was a good time cool. getting the family yeah. back together. Yeah. I like that, man. So I'm hoping this up this upcoming year we can trade back and go back up to Canada. Yeah, that, I think that's so. a cool thing, man. You know, get the networking together and yeah, and and help each other out, man. I I really dig that. Um, oh, kind of going upon that, I saw yeah. a quote the other day that said, said like, "Other musicians are not your enemy. Like, you have to." support other musicians to get support yeah and like it's got to be a genuine thing so like bouncing ideas off of each other's you know other bands and all that like it's not like oh we're playing this show we don't want them to know about it because they could steal that show or whatever yeah that's a very very community oriented thing it's got to be yeah that's one of the big things i've had to i've had to come to grip with is like your your biggest competition is yourself because you are the only you that exists yeah I think, uh, 
We're not going to get into parallel universes. <laughs> Mandela but, effect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got on a YouTube tangent last night. Yeah. Um, Down the rabbit hole of YouTube. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, you, you, are, you are the only version of you, and that is your brand. So nobody can really compete with that because yeah. nobody else is you. Yeah. Like, you know, you might think you're competing with other styles and genres and stuff, but like nobody's making the art that you make. Right. Uh, so once you, you know, once you get ingrained that in your head and realize you're only competing with your own laziness, um, that's kind of a game changer. Yeah, for know? sure. Because it, you know, you take a lot of that ego and, and posturing out of the way and you can just make some really cool things happen. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, and I'm not saying I don't struggle with it because I, I I I I don't I don't feel competitive until I am competitive, and I'm like, <laughs> we need to be better than those guys. Yeah. And I'm like, come on, man. Yeah. Uh, so I need to get out of my own. That that's that's advice I need to adhere to more often <laughs> than not as well. Um, well very cool, and uh, I I think something that might be really cool too for the Patreon folks, if because uh, we've talked we've touched on a lot like yeah. Kickstartering. Uh, building good content, when to do this, that, and the other. So uh, what we'll do for our Patreon followers, instead of you sitting down and like doing a how-to video and stuff, if you, uh, you, you can sit down with Cooper or, or you can do it yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, just give me, you know, like your, you know, top 10, top 25, however you want it. Your, your, uh, I guess your spark notes of being a DIY musician. Okay. Some things that you think are the most valuable. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and we'll we'll put your uh, we'll put your top list, however many you want to put it. Okay. Uh, and that will be you know that'll be the checklist for our Patreon followers. Sounds good to me. And that way, I think that'd be the most beneficial because that's some, I'm I'm a big believer in like templates and how tos. And oh stuff. yeah, absolutely. I'm a very visual. Like, tell me how to do it, and I will do it exactly yeah, how you yeah. said. Yeah. Uh, if you need an example, go see Mike's Instagram video because i i just told mike hey tell me what to do and i'll yeah. do it which was great by the way i watched it it was it was good oh, very, nice, very I'm glad you dug it. um well cool cool man uh where can we find you what all do we need to know about we're nearing the end of our time yeah yeah we, we do this for a while <laughs> yeah we're killing the game man um, <laughs> um so, yeah tell me tell me what's going on where to find you and all that yeah good stuff. um me personally i'm all over social media facebook i'm not really on twitter much i'm not a big fan of twitter which I probably should be in this day and age, but I'm not. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Instagram, Will Castle, Grow Drums, all one word. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm doing doing all these uh, weight losses over drum challenges. It's, it's or drum videos. It's it's more for like for me because I want to do something for me. Um, and weight loss is what I'm doing for me. Um, but yeah, check out those videos. Um, I'll be putting a ton more out. Um, if you need drums for something, hit me up. Um, I'd love to help out in any way I can. If you want to follow Cooper the Band, we're on all the social media. Um, on Facebook, we're Cooper the Band Official. Um, everything else is just Cooper the Band. Um, so, yeah, we're we're out there. Uh, we're doing, doing some cool stuff. Um, we'll, we'll see what the future holds. We might have something cool happening in January. It's going to be dope. I can't say anything about it right now because I don't know when we're going to launch that. But yeah. there will be something happening in January with... Uh, my band with my brother and Cooper the band. It's going to be pretty rad. Yeah. Come check it pajamas. out. <laughs> um, very cool, man. Dude, thanks a ton. This has been a blast. Dude, it, it, it's thanks been for very insightful, me, dude. Like, I I've, appreciate it. I've learned a ton today. Uh, yeah, I'm super inspired. I like, I want to go get to work now. Thanks, man. Uh, so, Will Casagro, K W A S I G R O H. My dude. That's I, right. I got there you, man. You go. Uh, I'm the king. I, I know how it is to have a weird last name. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it's Kashagro, not Quasigro, not Kawasaki. <laughs> it is Kashagro. It is, it is what you want to call it, me. Isn't Prefer it, to is Kashagro. It, but it Polish? Yeah, it's Polish. Polish. I'm not Polish. My father was adopted by the Kashagro guy. So I really don't know what my lineage is. It's all kind of weird. Huh. I did not so, know that. So, yeah. Huh. Uh, actually, my father's last name, I think, was Suarez before he was adopted. Oh, so wow. I might have some like some Spanish Mexican descent in me that I don't even know about. Oh know. wow! Okay. So yeah. Cool. Anyway. Well, oh, man, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much again. Dude, thanks um, for having me. Had a we're blast. Gonna, we're gonna wrap it up. Until next time, everybody. May your rolls be buttery. May your notes be in tune, and may you always stay at the grind. This has been another episode of the Modern Working Musician. Mm -mm. See y'all later. <laughs>